Hi and welcome. I'm Julianne Cost and in this video I'm going to show you how you can quickly publish a photo project using Adobe Express. Now some of you might have used Adobe Spark before and it's been rebranded and I want to make sure that we take a look at all of the new features. So before we get started you are looking at an example of a web page that I created that's scrolling on the right hand side of the screen and you'll notice that there's some photos in there as well as some video and even some text and captions. So before we get started, I just want to mention a few advantages of using Adobe Express. So first of all, it's template driven, so it can stand out above the noise, even if you're not a designer. It uses responsive design, so it's going to look great across devices, including all of our mobile devices, regardless of their orientation. With a very small learning curve, we can really get professional results quite quickly, and we can create these web pages anywhere on desktop or on a mobile device. We can share them very easily. We can get either the link or embed code, but the actual content is hosted by Adobe, so you don't have to worry about that. And if you make a mistake or you want to make updates to your web page, you can do so without having to republish a new link, so it's really easy. If you want to work with other people, there's a way to collaborate just via email, so you can invite others to edit a project. And if you have a subscription to any of the Creative Cloud products, you can actually create branded stories in order to make it your own. So first you'll go to express.adobe.com and you'll either sign in with your Adobe ID or you'll sign up for a free Adobe ID. And don't worry if your screen doesn't look exactly like mine, Adobe often updates the projects and templates that you'll see here. So I would go ahead and sign in with my Adobe ID. Then to get started, I will create a new project by clicking on the plus icon and then selecting web page. At the top right, we can see that there are a number of different themes that we can choose from. For now, I'll go ahead and select the crisp theme, but you should know that you can change the theme at any time. Then in order to start adding my content, I will click on the plus icon and choose to add a photo. We can upload a photo from our hard drive or we can use any of the free content here. We can also search Adobe Stock or we can click on the more icon to select additional sources. In this case, I want to use Adobe Lightroom because that's where I have all of my images already to make my project. And Lightroom also gives me the ability to make edits to my images and then update them very quickly in Express without having to re-export new versions of the files. Now, if you're using Lightroom, the cloud version, you can simply start by going to your recent albums and then selecting the images that you want to use. But because some of you might be using Lightroom Classic, I want to quickly show you how to access your photos. The first thing that you'll want to do in Lightroom Classic is create the collection of images that you want to use. Then using the cloud icon, you'll want to enable syncing and once you've done that, you'll notice an empty well to the left of your collections. If you click on that empty well, that tells Lightroom Classic to create smart previews of all of the images in the collection and synchronize them with the cloud so that you can then access them in Express. All right, let's switch back to Express. We can see that collection, although it's called an album here. I'll go ahead and click in order to see the contents and then select this first image to add it as my title page. In order to add a title, I'll just click here and then start typing Iceland, and then I'll go ahead and enter in a subtitle. If I want to reposition the title, I can drag it, and we can see that Express will automatically snap it to different areas of my image. And as it snaps it, it's also changing the alignment of the text. I'll go ahead and put that back in the center for now. And then I'm going to click in the photograph, which will give me this option to set the focal point. I'll go ahead and drag that over a little bit to the left and we can see a preview of that in the upper right. This is going to help me to select the correct positioning 
of this cover photo across devices that might have different orientations. All right, let's save that. And then I'll start scrolling to write my story. Whenever we see the plus icon, I can click on that in order to see all of my different options. I'll just start with some text here and type in, after arriving in Reykjavik, if I want to change the text, if I swipe to select it, you'll see I can change this to a head one or a head two. There's options for quotes as well as bulleted and numbered lists and several different alignment options. For now, I'll go ahead and leave that as a head two. And we have access to additional options for bold and italic text, plus the ability to add a link within the text. One thing I want to point out is if you are creating this on a browser on a mobile device, you can enable the dictation in order to add your text. All right, let's go ahead and click the plus icon and I want to add a second photograph. It will take me back to that same collection or album and I'll choose the next image and import it. Now we have some different options because this isn't the cover photo, so I can put this in line with any of the other photo grids, or I can choose to fill the screen. I can make it a window so that it slowly reveals the content, or I can use the full width option. I can also rearrange the order by using the move option, replace the content, or delete it at any time. For now, I'll choose in line, and we could add a caption, but I'll skip that, and instead I want to add a photo grid. So now I have the opportunity to add multiple images and Express will automatically create a grid from those images. If I wanted to change the order, I can move any of the images forward or backwards. I can also choose to show one larger. So now we have a large image at the top and then two smaller images. As soon as I'm happy with my grid, I'll choose save and now we can continue to scroll. Let's add another photo. In this case, I wanna add this photo of the glacier, as well as this image here, which is a panorama. So I'll import both of those, but I wanna change the settings for them. For this image of the glacier, I want it to slowly reveal itself within a window. Again, we could add a caption, so in this case, I will just paste in the name of the glacier, scroll down, and in this image here, I want to set this to full width, but I wanna add some images in between, so I'll click on the plus icon and choose photo grid again. Let's add these images here. We have two horizontals and two verticals, and again, I can rearrange these in any manner but I like the way they're paired up, so I'll go ahead and save that. All right, next let's add some video. I'll click on the plus icon, choose video, and then I'll paste in the link. This video is on YouTube, but you'll notice you can also paste a link from Vimeo or Adobe Express Spark Video. So let's go ahead and save that. We could now see that video. But I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down and look for some other options. Let's add a split layout this time. I'm gonna add an image on the left-hand side, this kind of overview of the basalt columns. And then on the right-hand side, I'll add multiple images, these three or four, and then import them. And we can see that the left side is going to stay in place while I can scroll through the images on the right. Of course, we can always click on the plus to add additional photos or text, video, or even a button. And if I wanted to swap these, I could use this icon here of the arrows. I'll go ahead and swap it back. And there's a gear icon right down here in case we wanted to add some image alt text to any of the photographs in the project. All right. Let's scroll down beyond the split layout and let's add a glide show. Now in this case, I want to add the background images first, so I'll select these two and then import those two images. When I'm happy with those, I'll go ahead and choose save. And now you can see as I scroll down through my image, it's going to zoom in a bit 
and I have an option to add additional images. So I'll click on the plus icon, choose photo, and then select this image of the lighthouse and import it. If I want to change the position of it, I can drag it over to the other side and then we'll scroll down and let's add another image. In this case, I want to add the image of the puffin. All right, let's import that. And if we wanted to add more, we could simply click the plus icon again. Now at the beginning, I mentioned that one of the advantages of using Lightroom was that I could make changes to my image and I wouldn't have to export them out as JPEGs and re-import them. So let's just take a look at that for a moment. I'm gonna switch back to Lightroom. I don't really like the sepia toned image here, so I'll tap D to go to the develop module and I'll bring it back to color. Because the images are being synchronized when I make changes, Lightroom Classic will go ahead and upload those changes to the cloud so that when we return to our browser and I choose to replace this image, we can select that updated version that's now in color. All right, let's scroll down to the end of the project. I want to add a button here as a call to action. So I'll type in for more information, please see my blog. And then I'll type www.jcost.com slash blog. I can then align this in the center and save it. And if the viewer clicks on this, it would take them directly to my blog. All right, let's add one more photo here. I'm going to select this logo and then import it so that it's displayed at the end of the project. All right, let's scroll up to the top here. And remember, if I wanted to change the theme, I could do so at any time. If I change, for example, to the vintage theme, we can see that there's a color overlay that's added to the first image and the type, the font has actually changed. So be sure to give all of these different templates a try, but for now, I'm gonna to return to the crisp template. If you have a subscription to Creative Cloud, then you can create your own branded templates. If you wanted to create a brand, simply click Create Brand. It will take you to this page where you could then upload your logo, pick your different colors, as well as choose your fonts. All right, when I'm ready to view my project, I can either choose to preview it or I can present it. To get a better idea of what this would look like, without all of the little pluses in between all of my images. One thing I might not have mentioned was when someone does preview the images that are in a photo grid, they can also click on any of those images in order to see them larger and move through them as well. All right, let's escape out of here. There's some additional settings that you might wanna look at. You can choose whether or not to show a header or footer, and you can also enter in the Google Analytics tracking ID. If I want to collaborate with others, I can click on this icon here and then enter in their email to invite them to edit. When I'm ready to share my project, I can click on share and choose to publish and share a link. Here I can enter in a title as well as pick a category. I can show my author name as well as add any additional photo credits. If I wanna get my project noticed, I can enable this option right here and it might be featured on the Adobe Express website. All right, once I create my link, I can then copy that link as well as share it to additional social media sites. And don't forget, if you do need to make changes to your images or your text, you can make those changes and then reshare the project, which will share all of your updates, but it doesn't change your original link. If you wanna see all of your projects, we can click on the A in the upper left and then click on projects. Here I have a variety of web pages as well as some individual posts that I've used for social media. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.